Hi, you are watching. The story begins inside the southern edge mountains of Xi'an, Shangxi province. A white-haired man can be seen injured and kneeling on the ground, while several people in front of him, asking him to give up, as they call him the young cult leader, which he can't help himself but laugh about the circumstances that he was in right now, since he already knows the existence of a malevolent force that wanted him off the map, but he didn't expect it to be the people most close to him, the vicious blood squad, who has spent the longest time by his side. Hearing all his talk, the girl decides to explain herself, saying that, the current demonic cult needed change, and for that change to happen, they, the vicious blood squad made up their minds to unalive him, while holding back their tears, but this bullshit didn't convince the young cult leader, even for a bit, now he could only see them as weaklings, who cower and is willing to break off their pledge of loyalty, in the face of power, but the young cult leader's words didn't mean anything to them, therefore they still decided to end him, now that he is outnumbered, the young cult leader, smile in front of death, thinking it was over for him. However, in just a split second, he changes his mind, deciding to never give up until his last breath. Since his father is the leader of the demonic cult, he will show them how Apples doesn't fall far from the tree, for he is the demonic cult's young cult leader, Cheong Wu Baek. With him declaring this, his eyes were filled with fiery will, and was determined to see another day. However, as he was about to launch an attack, a wild cheek suddenly came crushing down on him breaking his neck in half, and with this, the real main character appeared at the scene. But before all of this happened, the main character, after four years of teacher's college, two years of conscript military service, and two years of preparation for the teacher's certification examination, finally, Kim Sojin, our main character, passed the teacher certification examination, at the age of 28 years old, but to be honest with himself, he didn't exactly intended to study education. His only reason was, a stable and quite decent earnings, but fuck all of it, since he doesn't have a clue what to do next, since the house price's inflation beats the wage hike. Still, the good news is that people don't have to die, because there is a way to multiply money, hundreds and thousand folds, and that is with stocks, and crypto, which he ultimately failed, and was on bankruptcy because of it. With this outcome, he could only cry in blood, while looking at his entire asset evaporates. A few moments later, the tour buses that they were riding on came to a stop, and now the students gathered outside. At the same time, the teacher shouts, telling them what to do, but seeing that her voice isn't enough, and the students aren't paying any attention to her, she politely asks her co-worker, Sojin, to lead the kids, because she has a bit of a cold, so she couldn't shout as loud as she could, but before she could even finish her statements, she was shocked to notice the expression on Sojin's face and that he is deeply out of it, while looking at his phone lifelessly, seeing the state that he was in, the teacher decides not to bother him any further, and just do their work all on her own. A few moments more, Sojin is now standing inside the building, while still wearing the same expression as before, lifelessly going on about how he has to take care of these kids in his current situation. He even thinks of quitting, but before he could drown himself even more in self-pity, he noticed someone's going somewhere, they shouldn't suppose to go. While Sojin couldn't determine who it was, he was sure that the unknown student is wearing a uniform from their school. Therefore, as a responsible teacher, he decides to follow him, while cursing at these high schoolers, for not even giving him time to be sad. But to his surprise, opening the door got him the shock of his life. Now that he is inside a spacious room, question filled his mind. But since he was still a teacher, his priority was to get the student back to the group. Therefore, when he saw the student he didn't hesitate to catch up to him and lecture him about what he just did, and to his surprise, it was Yudioka from class 2b. Therefore Sojin asked, why someone who is usually quiet, do this? However, Diakwa didn't answer his question, since he was more worried about his teacher, so he tells his teacher to hurry up and get out of here, because if he stays in this place, he will fall under a terrible curse, but this reason of his didn't convince Sojin for even a bit, therefore Sojin was about to give this bitch a lecture that he won't forget. But before he could even do that, a bright light shines to their side, so their attention was diverted towards it, and to their amazement, the light is coming from the hill of gold in front of them. With this, Sojin was so shocked that he couldn't utter any word to describe his feelings, but as a man that went through hardships, he couldn't just believe it with his eyes, therefore he went over to check if it was a real gold, and with them biting it, he confirmed that it was in fact real, while Diakwa also takes a closer look at it. 
but his reason was different from his teacher, and as he thought, there are ominous souls dwelling in these gold coins, but his thought were interrupted by his teacher, abruptly laughing loudly, Sojin then states what happened to him, so he thought the heaven abandoned him, however, opportunities can come to anyone's life, and he is not an idiot that will lose an opportunity like this, so without any second guess, he started scooping all of the golden coins he could carry, while Diakwa warns him that he will be cursed at this rate, but as a man that went through hardships, he doesn't care about any curse that he may receive, he even asks to bring it on, because he knows that this world is hell without money, and to both their surprise, the floor suddenly cracks, leaving them to fall in the void, while Sojin could only swear, since he didn't expect the misfortune to take an effect right away, and as they were falling, a voice tells them that, the ones who disturbs this king's rest, deserves to be cursed, and will be forced to tread through this world, face trials, and stay among the dead for the rest of his life. Hearing all this, he could only scream, while his body seems to be shrinking. Suddenly a system interface pops up, congratulating him for awakening as a player. He then acquired a trait called Necromancer, and a skill called Skeleton Creation. But, the system reminds him that, in order for him to get the first Skeleton Underling, he has to personally kill the target first, and as he was questioning what was just happening, he suddenly fell down on someone's neck, but he didn't realize it at first, since he was still busy noticing the changes on his body. With this sudden change, he concludes that he became younger. After that, he noticed all the masked men in front of him, and all he could see is shock on their faces. So upon further investigation, he just realized that he killed the demonic cult's young cult leader, with his cheeks. Finally grasping the severity of his situation, he was still in denial about it. However, his doubts were all thrown out of the way, by the system informing him that he personally killed that person, so the requirements have met, and he can summon him as a skeleton underling, but instead of being happy, he could only feel his life fading away. Unexpectedly he noticed a blade about to hit him, therefore he instinctively dodged it. Now he realized that the masked men are going to kill him now. With this he assumes that they must be angry because he killed their colleague, so he tries to defuse the situation, and explain to them that it was all just an accident, but his persuasion ability wasn't effective, so they just started to chase him, and as he was running away, like a person from a horror movie, he trips on himself, now that he was lying on the ground, the masked bitch did not hesitate to pin him by piercing his shoulder, with this, he truly screamed his lungs out, the woman then states that, this is the reward for killing the young cult leader in their stead, so she declared that she will send him off the least pain possible, but he could only question how stupid a statement it was, since he was just stabbed by them, while still, crying how it all hurts, now that he was on death's door, his life started flashing before his eyes, and he didn't even got to enjoy his gold coins, but then, the system reminds him about the skeleton soldier he can summon, usually, with Kim Sojin's personality, he would first worry about his belongings, but in a moment of despair, worrying is a luxury, therefore he summons the skeleton soldier with all his might, soon after, a bright light flashed before the masked man, while the system informs him that, the summon can use a fraction of its previous life's abilities, and the summon will share a fraction of its ability with its summoner, but at that moment, he didn't see the system, since he was busy looking somewhere else, and that his eyes were fixated towards his first summon, while, the traitors couldn't believe what they were witnessing, and as they were stupefied to even move, the flesh of the young cult leader started to melt and separate from its bones, shocking everyone who witnessed it, and now only a skeleton is facing them, and with this, the skeleton started to let out a terrifying aura, scaring the traitors immensely, triggering their fight or flight response, which they chose to fight head on, however, the first one to charge, was instantly split into two, now the traitors are more caution in dealing with the skeleton, while Sojin, regained hope in his eyes, and now he sees that the system is informing him that, he can give orders to the skeleton soldier, seeing that his luck turned for the better, he smiled, then stands up, and as his first order, he commands the skeleton to kill the bastards in front of him, so as the onslaught happens, Sojin remembers his dream, and that is to become a rich man, it was a dream that he carried since childhood, to make that dream come true, he worked tirelessly, and although it was different from what he had in mind, he was happy about it. But in the end, when his dream was about to come true, he was suddenly brought to this reality. So now he could only accept it as such, while the skeleton screamed his war cry, terrifying all the traitors in sight. And not a moment pass, he charges at them, forcefully swinging his sword with a vengeance, killing them off, one by one. 
which they are powerless to defend to, but since the bitch was still alive, she manages to calm her teammates and form a plan to cut the skeleton's limbs, and since they assume that there is no way a mere skeleton can have inner energy, with no sword technique, they regain some of their composure, while Sojin could hear them talk about it, now he could only grin, as he hopes that it would be better if he didn't understand anything, however, even if he hate to admit it, there is no doubt that, he has fallen into the world of martial arts. The skeleton then decide to let out a simple laugh, and with this, it manages to nullify the bitch's previous attempt to calm them down, and now they are shaking with fear. The bitch finally realize that her teammates are useless, therefore she decides to do it herself, and charge at the skeleton all alone, but her attempt was easily blocked by the skeleton, and suddenly, the skeleton uses his previous martial arts skill, completely catching her off guard. With this, the skeleton easily killed her on the spot. Still, the skeleton wasn't done, so it looks at the traitors, and with no hope in leaving this place alive, they attack it all together. Which one of them manages to pierce the skeleton on the back, but, since he was now a skeleton, these attack were useless against him, so he manages to cut off anyone, who even dares to come closer to him, and since they are just too stupid to realize that their attack wasn't effective, they still tried to stab him one after the other leaving themselves in the range of the skeleton's blade. And so, the skeleton easily cuts them like butter. With this, the skeleton could only laugh as he served justice to his previous life, while Sojin was mortified, since this is the first slaughter he has seen in his entire life. So he tries to calm himself down, by convincing himself that he doesn't have any choice in this particular situation. And now that he was still hurting, he decides to get away, because there might still be enemies left. But before he could leave, he noticed the gold bag coins he looted before coming here. So he went over to it, and as he got closer to it, he notices his reflection on the lake, now realizing he wasn't mistaken that he has become younger. Still, he smiles, because he does not care, whether he is young or not, or whatever this place is. As long as he has this money, he does not give a shit, even if this place is hell. Elsewhere, in the Grand Myriad Mountains, inside the Demonic Cult's King Seeker Pavilion, the Elder was surprised to receive the news that the Vicious Blood Squad was massacred. With this, he could only laugh at how ridiculous the outcome was. Now that the situation was more than interesting to him, he orders the individual who just reported to him to go to the Central Plains, to which she was delighted to accept. In a change of scene, inside the East Lake Inn, the people inside were enjoying their drinks, talking about how good life is, to which his companion was surprised to see his friend, who was always saying how boring his life is change his opinions overnight, therefore he inquires, who made him smiling like that, to which he explains that, he is just happy, hearing a rumor about a new divine star appearing, which his companion was confused, so he asks if he was talking about, the little moonstorm sword Yanjigang, which he denies instantly, telling him that, Yanjigang is already someone of the past, because he was talking about someone with an alias, King, hearing this news surprises his drinking buddy, because of how ridiculous it sounds, a rookie, with an alias of a king, since an alias is kind of a nickname in the martial arts world, and is mainly named after weapons, appearance, or the martial arts used by the nickname's owners. Therefore, there has never been a single case of someone among the newcomers of Murum carrying the alias, King. Hearing about this rumor, they could only wish to see him personally, but before they could even finish their conversations, a man appeared, coming down from the stairs, gaining everyone's attention, by his elegant stature and his luxurious clothing, and with everyone's excitement, they couldn't contain their voice, therefore shouting his alias, calling in the king, and now that everyone's eyes are now locked onto him, he politely orders the innkeeper, to bring him his special item to him, which the innkeeper, hurriedly went to the back and get it, and as this happens, the man from before is wondering what it was, and not a moment's passed, his question were answered, by the innkeeper bringing out a bell and giving it to the king, and as soon as he rang it, the people went crazy, seeing that his buddy was confused. He explains to him that, when the king rings the bell, all the food will be free, and the king will pay for everyone, earning him the title of the Golden King, Kim Sojin. Now they are happily enjoying their time with each other, while it has been three weeks since he came to this village. As he predicted, this place is none other than the world of martial arts. However, he still does not care, since he has his golden coins that he can use all he wants for the rest of his life. By the way, his body is young now, and based on his skin and height, he should be around 16 years old. 
Now he contemplates if he is allowed to drink alcohol, but he decides not to mind it, since his real age is 31 years old, and if someone's dissatisfied, he will just throw some gold coins, because if you have gold, everything in the world come easy. But before he finished his thoughts, a wild douche appeared, throwing an alcohol on him, which surprises everyone who sees it, and now Sojin was suddenly surrounded by a bunch of fools, who doesn't know better, courting death, by asking Sojin to hand over all of his gold, and to their surprise, Sojin does not take them seriously, which offended the fool, so he points his sword towards him, asking if he knows what situation that he was in, but unexpectedly, a waiter suddenly went over to apologize, which the bandit assumes the guy is here to apologize for Sojin, so he tells him that it is too late, because once he has draws out his sword, this place must be covered in blood, but to his surprise, the waiter is actually apologizing for him instead, which made him confused, while the waiter is advising him to run, but since his brain couldn't handle this, he immediately resort to violence, asking if he was a joke, while Sojin still didn't see him as a threat, as he laughs how interesting the martial world is, he then advises the thief to listen to what the waiter has just said, while he still can, because it will be the last chance he can offer to him. But since he only sees Sojin as a fatso, he is more than willing to beat him to a pulp. But since he was about to do some harm toward Sojin, the skeleton emerged from the ceiling. While looking at them menacingly, unexpectedly, Sojin orders the skeleton to not kill them, since they are just thugs. But in return, he orders the skeleton to beat them to hell, which the skeleton understood the assignment. So it didn't hesitate to do just that, while Sojin enjoyed the scream of his victims. After that, he then decided to go back to his place, but still, he didn't forget to pay the old man of his services, and the damages that he caused. Meanwhile, Dan Sekyung, the eldest daughter of Gansu's Dan clan appeared outside the inn, and now that she confirmed it to be the Eastern Lake Inn, she entered the front door, to which she was greeted by the unconscious bodies of the thugs lying on the floor. With this scene in front of her, she asks the waiter what happened, to which he explained what just happened, which she could only sigh upon hearing it. She then asks the waiter to give her a dorm, which the waiter was willing to escort her, but before that, he noticed the pattern on her waist, which she asks why he was staring at her like that, to which he explained that one of the guests is also wearing the same pattern as her, while it seems he was talking about Sojin's skeleton, as Sojin is enjoying the benefits that he is having a skeleton subordinate at his disposal, and now he questions if this is a curse, because it is so cool, but now that he utters the word, so cool, the system interacted with him, telling him that it had heard about the name before, which confused Sojin, while the system realized that he is not a resident of the Murum world, so as a guest who aren't invited, they must return to their own world safely, so it initiates the Project Homecoming, which requires him to enter the Venerable Martial Academy. At the same time, Sekyung is explaining to the waiter that, the pattern on her emblem, is the insignia of students accepted in the Venerable Martial Academy and every student admitted into the Venerable Martial Academy must wear this sign, which surprises the waiter, since the academy is the biggest and most famous school in Murum, and it is an institution every martial clan dreams of sending their young prodigies for education, while Sekyung is in deep thought, thinking about the one who has the same insignia as her, so she concludes that they can depart together tomorrow morning, and even if she doesn't know which clan he belongs to, but since he spared these idlers, she assumes that he is definitely someone who is good-natured and upright. While Sojin on the other hand, is smiling like a maniac, as he refused the system's quest, but we all know what happens to someone who outright refuses these systems, so as he lies down on his bed, the system starts to show errors, warning him of what's to come, now penalty interface hovers above him, confused what is going on, the system explains that, since he rejected the quest, his job penalty, the curse of undead, will take effect, and with this, he noticed an immense pain on his left hand, and as he looks at it, he just realized he fucked up, so now he could only scream in agony, as his flesh melts, a few moments later, he regained consciousness, only to be surprised by his new look, now he is half undead, just like what the curse says to him. Hit that like button and thanks for watching.